I'm Trisha Dios, I'm a registered dental hygienist and also a regional coordinator for the Oral Cancer Foundation. And this is the beginning of a video series aimed to educate dental professionals on oral cancer, early detection of oral cancer, and the HPV connection. Since 1999, the Oral Cancer Foundation has financially sponsored a lot of the research that has been done on oral cancer and HPV. And through working closely with OCF, I have an inside track to that information that has been published over the years and what is yet to be revealed. I've teamed up with the foundation in hopes that through these videos, dentists and dental hygienists have this access to information that is credible, practical, and most importantly, it can be brought back to your patients because we know that a trip to the dentist is no longer just about a cleaning or just about a filling. We have an incredible opportunity to be at the forefront of early detection of oral cancer. And we actually have a responsibility to identify any oral abnormality through a comprehensive visual and tactile exam. And remember, as dental professionals, we already have a proficiency and an expertise of the oral cavity. This is only meant to build on that so that you are even better equipped to educate your patients, perform a comprehensive screening, and save lives. And there is no better practice builder than saving lives. So let's make it even more obvious to our patients that the dental appointment is indispensable, especially when it includes an oral cancer screening. Let's talk about transmission of genital and oral HPV. Some HPVs like 6, 11, 16, and 18 prefer mucosas of the genital areas and of the oral cavity. So having sex and oral sex are means of transferring these strains because of that direct skin-to-skin -skin contact. There have been questions even about French kissing and if that's a means of transmission. And as of right now, there's not enough conclusive evidence to say for sure. But HPV is so common that nearly all sexually active men and women will be infected at some point in their life. And this is not meant to scare anyone, but just to inform that if you're having sex, you can get HPV, even if you've had sex with just one person. The vast majority of people will be infected, the body will be able to clear it, and because it's asymptomatic, they will never know that this even took place. When it comes to HPV, we don't know everything, but let's talk about what we do know. HPV is an epithelial virus, meaning it infects the cells of the skin and mucosas. Now, mucosas include the genital areas, but it also includes areas we work in, such as the lining of the mouth, throat, tonsils, tongue, and especially the base of the tongue. There are about 200 different types of HPV. We know that about nine of them cause cancer. We know that others cause papillomas, also known as warts. And then there's a group of them where it's not clearly defined what they do or how they behave. As dental professionals, what we're gonna be most interested in is HPV 16, because that is the strain responsible for most oral pharyngeal cancers. HPV related oral pharyngeal cancers are something that we've only recently become aware of. In 1999, a paper was published that strongly attached HPV-16 with cancers occurring in the back of the mouth. And in the past decade, the research has been slow to come out, but it is confirmed that HPV-16 is the number one cause of oral pharyngeal cancers, surpassing tobacco in the United States. And we're talking about the dental professional's role in the office. So oral pharyngeal cancers are rapidly increasing in incidence, but they are still a very small risk in our big world. When it comes to dental professionals, we work in the mouth every day, so that's part of our everyday world. So our responsibility to early detection of oral cancer is huge. The oral cancer screening itself, it's non-invasive, painless, and expensive. It's relatively quick when compared to other health screenings. It also adds incredible value to the patient's appointments and to our profession. When it comes to raising awareness, I firmly believe that it's extremely important to let the patient know that you are performing the oral cancer screening. If your office prefers to not mention cancer, another way you could say it is that you're looking for any oral abnormalities. However, I'm less enthusiastic about this stance because I really believe we should educate our patients and let them know as much as possible so that they can lead healthy lives. In the end, it really is up to however you see fit within your practice. 
oftentimes when I've started to do an oral cancer screening, I've gotten replies from my patients like, I've never had a cigarette in my life, or, you know, isn't that disease just for old men who smoke and drink a lot? And this brings a beautiful problem for me because now I have this opportunity to educate the patient that in fact it is the young, non-smoking patients that are the fastest growing segment to get the oral pharyngeal cancers and that is because of the HPV connection.